For the Selena fans out there who don't want to watch the documentary Selena and Yolanda because you don't want to give Yolanda Saldivar any type of a platform but you're still nosy and you want to know what was said in the documentary, I did our homework for us and I'm going to present to the group. This is going to be a recap of episode one if you haven't watched it yet. This is your chance to keep scrolling but there was some information in it that kind of made me go hmm but ultimately she pulled the trigger and she pew pewed Selena and she's exactly where she deserves to be in my humble opinion. All right, episode one focuses a lot around Yolanda's family. Yolanda's niece was the boutique manager in San Antonio, and Yolanda was the boutique manager in Corpus Christi, and Yolanda was the boss over both of the boutiques. Now, the focus of the documentary is that Yolanda has a side of the story that she's never told before, and here were some of the high points of what they revealed. It's been widely accepted that the motive was Yolanda was embezzling from Selena's boutique, Selena, etc. And that was her motive, that she got caught. Well, the niece of Yolanda, who was the manager in San Antonio, says that not only could she not have been embezzling um, because there was no money, that payroll was bouncing, there were no customers. This was a dream of Selena's, but it wasn't successful by any means. Yolanda says that she went into the bank with Selena and the bank manager told her, your payroll checks are bouncing. You're, you have $50 in your bank account. Like you need to close your businesses, they're crumbling. And Selena just wouldn't let go of her dream. And also that was the one entity in Selena's life where her father was not involved. So, um, and that bothered her father because she, her father had control over her singing career, but had nothing to do with the businesses. Multiple people in the documentary say that between 30 to $90,000 was allegedly embezzled, but no one could give a total dollar amount. Yolanda's side leans into the fact that she was never prosecuted for embezzlement. And so that none of that is true. And there were allegations made against her, but no one ever presented her with an actual number or any evidence. But then the prosecution says, well, we didn't charge her with embezzlement because she got convicted of schmurder, so embezzlement was neither here nor there. March 9th, she gets called into a meeting with Selena's father, Selena's sister, and Selena, and allegedly they are confronting her about the embezzlement. The prosecution says that Selena's dad and Selena's sister say that this was the first time Selena seemed to believe them and had her arms crossed and was very defensive and was not defending Yolanda at all. Yolanda says it was the exact opposite. Yolanda says that Selena did not believe them and that she was supportive of them. And she kept saying, if you don't stop yelling at her, if you don't let her talk, we're going to leave. And they would never let her talk. On March 11th, she goes to a Pew Pew store and she buys a Pew Pew. She says it was in self-defense because Selena's dad was very well connected and he was scary and she was afraid for her safety. March 11th, she also has her cousins or nephews and her dad come down with a trailer, pack up her apartment and move her back to San Antonio. But when she packed up her apartment, she still had the apartment until the end of the month. So she left her answering machine behind. One thing I thought was interesting was that the family has recordings from the answering machine where Selena called her five times between March 9th and March 12th. And they were not animosity messages. They were like, where are you girl? I'm calling you from the plane. This is so expensive, but I'm worried about you. Like, call me back. I wanna talk to you. It wasn't like you stole from me and I don't ever want anything to do with you again. There was also a voicemail on her answering machine from a new nursing job that she had gotten. Her stating that she passed her drug screen she had orientation from 8 to 4.30 on this date and she needed to bring her nursing license. So the family says that shows that she had already moved on from her employment with Selena and she was going to go back to being a nurse. Most of us know what happened on March 31st. Yolanda goes down and gets a room at what used to be the day's end. The point of the trip was to give Selena back tax documents so she could file her taxes for her boutique. And Yolanda says that she was holding the pew-pew to her head to show Selena that she was suicidal. Um, and then the gun accidentally went off and shot Selena. She says she didn't know that Selena was shot. Um, she said she thought the noise scared Selena the same way it scared her, and that's why Selena ran off. There was a maid at the motel who says that she saw Yolanda follow behind and step outside of the room, and as Selena was running to the office, um, Yolanda raised the pew-pew and pointed at her again, did not fire, but then drops the weapon and says, bitch. In the documentary, they reveal that that was not that statement was not given to the police on the day of the incident. It wasn't until several days later that the maid gives that statement. Then, of course, a some people say six, some people say nine hour standoff happened where a hostage negotiator was talking to Yolanda. One thing they bring up that I think is interesting is that Yolanda didn't mention the fact that it was an accident until after 
the hostage negotiator mentions to Yolanda that there is a chance that the weapon could accidentally go off because she is actively holding the weapon to her head. And he is telling her to please put it down because it could accidentally go off. That seems to be the introduction of the word accident. And that's where her story becomes that it was an accident. They also talk about how three days after the incident, when the room was finally turned back over to the motel, the motel had a maid cleaning out the room and found Yolanda's purse in a safe. The family says, Yolanda's family says that shows shoddy police work because how did you not know that there was items in the safe? And inside the safe was a letter that Yolanda had paid an attorney to write that was dated March 13th and it was a resignation from all of Selena's businesses. Um, and in the letter, it cites that Yolanda had no choice but to resign because of Selena's father and the way that he intervened and how she felt unsafe. Um, Yolanda says that she FedExed the letter to Selena and that she initially refused to sign for it, but she eventually did and she had signature confirmation. And there's also a statement in the trial where Selena's husband, Chris, acknowledges that she got a FedEx letter from Yolanda through an attorney resigning and that Selena would not accept it.